Whoever so holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Oh yeah. Feeling powerful. Hey there, fitness friends. If you found this video, you're about to watch one of my live stream clips from my Facebook live streams. If you find there's a topic discussed here that you'd like to know more about, comment down below, and who knows, I might use it as a topic for a future stream or YouTube video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, enjoy the clip. Uh, yeah, so I have, this, I have this little Wacom tablet that I can use to draw stuff out on. So right here, it's a little drawing tablet. I can use to draw out some exercises if you guys want me to draw some stuff. Let's see, Scott says he's been rotating. So that's, good job, Scott. Scott's one of my best and favoritest people, one of my favorite clients. I know you're not supposed to say that, but hey, it's my stream, I can do what I want. Scott's one of my favorite clients and he has been uh, trying to do his quarantine workouts. He's been trying to maintain that push-pull leg scheme that we've been doing at the gym and adapting it at home. So let's see, Scott said he's been doing the three sets. Uh, what do you mean by three sets, Scott? You mean you've been trying to do at least three sets for push, three sets for pull, and three sets for legs? Because you probably want to get at least six sets in, six sets of any of, we didn't, we, that's one thing we didn't talk about on the last video was how many sets you should do. Like how many, how many sets of an exercise do you need to do to actually make the muscle have an adaptation? Because uh, if you only do like three sets, it's usually not enough to get an adaptation. All right, so Scott said he's been doing push-ups, goblet squats, chin-ups, so he must just mean like the three sets, he must, I, let me, correct me if I'm wrong here, Scott, but you, when you said the three sets you were doing, you were talking about doing three different kinds of, uh, three different categories. So that's, that's okay. Yeah, the three movements, three, three movements. There we go, three, okay. Um, so yeah, chin-ups, that's good, because you're doing like, you can do pull-ups or chin-ups. Both of those are like a, a vertical pulling movement, so that would work for your pull day. And then you'd have, uh, you said you've been doing goblet squats, where you grab onto the weight, you squat down and you come up. Okay, that would be the example of your leg workout. And then push-ups, if you can do them, you know, they, there's modified push-ups you can do and I can show you guys that. Um, but yeah, you can do push-ups as, pu as your push day. And actually, I actually have another webcam that I'm gonna try to set up here, specifically to show you guys exercises. So I think we're done talking about quarantine workouts. Let's try to do David tries to draw like Khan Academy videos. I'm glad this is working. Every, all my scenes are working so far, so you, you never know. I, you might just get some, I might even be able to do some special, special things on here like, uh, boom, whoa, watch out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> watch out for Wolverine, man, it's Wolverine. Sorry, my hair, my Wolverine hair is squished. My grandson thinks my trainer is the Wolverine. Yes. They actually based the Wolverine off of me, so they consulted me. When Hugh Jackman was trying to get jacked, trying to become a jacked man, they asked me, how do we get him there, David? And over the course of several movies, uh, you know, they got there. And uh, here's one line. Here's another. I'm trying to do a graph, okay? Is everybody ready for a graph? Try to be excited about the graph, okay? Be like, yeah, let's see some, let's see some, uh, some thumbs up and some hearts. Give me a, give me a heart for the, the graph here, okay? Give me a heart. Ah, not that kind of heart. That's a bad looking heart there. There we go, okay? Everybody loves a good graph. So this is a graph. We're gonna talk about um, uh, volume, okay? Or like, maybe like, let me see if I can flip this thing around here and use the eraser. Uh, there we go, hey, look, it's working. Oh, we got, the we got the hearts. Love it, Scott. I love that you love it. Oh, God, Will. I love that you love graphs, my man. Here, you know, I'm gonna love, I'm gonna, I guess I can just like it. I can't, I can't love your response, unfortunately, Willie. So, Will, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about volume right now, and uh, if you want to jump in with any, we'll, so just so you guys know, Will is one of the other trainers that I work with at LA Fitness, and so it's great that he's here because if he has any uh, feedback too or anything I, that he feels like I'm leaving out, then he can add into this equation here. Okay, so let's say like how many sets you should do. So let's like say how 
how, let's say like how much, should you exercise? Okay, for like strength. Okay, we're trying to build up strength. This is not talking about cardio, okay? Cardio you can do every day. If you wanna go out for a jog or go out for a walk, do that every day, okay, that's fine. What we're talking about is strength because you need to build some lean muscle and uh, that's, oh hey, there's Judy, yes. She says yes, she loves grass. Judy loves grass too, good. I'm glad everybody's on page with the graphs here, okay? So, so it kind of looks this way. We, I'll show you guys like, um, let's say this is the, the amount of volume we do, okay? Hold on a sec, I'm not sure if this is the best. Yeah, that's not working super great. Let's try to go back here a sec, okay? So this is like the number of sets that you do. Okay, thanks. Will, Will says he's gonna pitch in when he can. All right, thanks, Willie. All right, so let's say this is the this is the amount of volume. So like, if you go this way, this is like you do more sets. Okay, so like, let's say you're doing like uh, you know we don't need to be super exact about this, but let let's say that you're doing like uh, this is like one set, two sets, three sets. Okay, yada yada yada. This is not the scale. Okay, this this little symbol means not the scale past this point. Okay. So let's say this is uh, six, six sets, this is 10 sets, this is like, let's say this is like 15, this is 20, this is like 30, okay? It's a little cramped, I know, sorry about that. Um, and then this is just, so like this is like an increasing amount of sets, so the more sets you do, and this right here, let me use a different color for this one, this is, this is gains, okay? It's, um, oops, see if I can, oh, I'm not trying to do that. Sorry, there's like a little thing I can use to switch between the ballots. Okay, Judy says, LOL, yes, I'm on my computer. I ran into the kitchen and just made a plate of food though. Ah, oh, Judy, good hustle. She, she's getting her running in. I'm already getting her to exercise more. That's great, okay. So let's see, um, see if I can get this to change to a different color. Okay, so you got a graph of gains. So they could, this is the, this is like your, how much muscle you're building, okay? If you wanna build more muscle, obviously if you do more, oh, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor now, you probably can't. If I go this way, if we increase the volume, we should get more gains, right, okay? But like how much? How much volume do we really need in order to get a significant amount of gain? So let me switch colors here and I will show you. Let's use like a, like a green here. I don't know why. So the graph is gonna look something like this, okay? So as we go, we start to hit more and more gains and then it kind of goes like this. It starts to taper off a little bit, okay? And then eventually, it, it never really flattens out completely, but it it's very slowly keeps going up here, okay? In that kind of direction. So if we look at our graph here, you wanna do, what I was telling Scott earlier, is that you wanna do at least six sets when you're doing a workout, because that's where it really starts to kind of pick up, where you're really starting to get like a lot of the gains here. So let me see if I can switch to a different color here. So like from right, right about here, you got six sets, right? So we wanna kinda of hit this point where you start getting, you wanna be like in this area right here, okay? So this area, that's the, um, that's for most people, that's what they wanna hit. And that's somewhere between six to 10 sets, maybe even 15 sets, okay? So when you're doing an exercise, and like what happens a lot of times when people go around in a circuit, um, you know, they'll, they'll do like, maybe they're doing, so say, say they're doing this, they're doing like, they're doing some squats, they do some push-ups, maybe they do some crunches, okay, and then they're doing like, uh, you know, some shoulder, shoulder raises, whoop. Uh, raises, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Oh, yeah, might have to move some stuff around here. Doing some shoulder raises, and then they're doing like, uh, I don't know, 
lunges or something like that. Okay, and then they do like a row. Okay, so they have like, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're doing like six exercises, which is great. But I'm not talking about doing six sets of, of all these different exercises. We're talking about like, this is the gains like per muscle, okay? So if you're talking about like, you wanna work out your legs really well, and you do, you do squats, and you do, then you do push-ups and crunches, and you do all this stuff, you're actually only getting like one set of these um, except for legs, you're, you'd be getting two sets. So like, let, let's tally it up here, okay? Let's, uh, I'm just doing this off the fly. Hopefully this works. So, um, oops, let me try to get a different color here. Uh, I'm gonna try to get like a red. Uh, like an orange or something, okay? Okay, so you got one set of squats. So like, well, let's, let's tally this up. So you got like uh, one set of legs here. You got one set of legs here. Okay, and then for each of these other ones, y'all have their own individual ones, like uh, you know, one set of push-ups. Uh, you're kind of hitting shoulders a little bit, shoulders while well, you're doing their push-ups too. So you're getting like two sets of shoulders in, you're getting two sets of legs in. Crunches, that's just completely different. So that's like, let's call that like green here, okay? And then row is, that's, that's your back muscles. So let's get like, uh, I don't know, a blue here or something. That's black. Okay, it doesn't matter. But you can see like all these have different colors, okay? So like squats and lunges, those would be like two sets. So if we're tallying it up, it's like one, two, okay? But we need to get to six, six sets. So that's not really gonna work. So you, what you'd have to do is like, you might have to cut it out and start doing it to like, you could like cut out this and cut out this and cut out this, okay? And so you just do like three sets of these and then you do like three sets of these, because these are both gonna work your legs and it's gonna get you up to that six sets that you need. Now, it's not a magic number. It's just, there, there's a guy named Dr. Kramer who came out with like a lot of, uh, he's like kind of the guru on volume, the, the original kind of grandfather of like uh, the foundational kind of guy, the grand pooba who started the whole, how much volume you should have, okay? But then as, as you can see, um, let me erase some of this stuff, okay? So like, if I, obviously if you if you do like 10 sets of them, that'd be even better, okay? But this is like weekly volume, okay? So this is like, this is like uh, let me back up a little bit here. This is like weekly. So what I was telling Scott earlier is that I want, I want I, when you do these push, pull, and leg scheme, I want you to do at least six sets because if you're just doing like, you know, one set of push-ups and one set of legs or whatever, it's not enough volume. Eventually you'd want to get on the whole week, you want to get up to, uh, you know, 10 to 15, 20. Like once you start getting up to like 15 or 20, you're really getting a lot of gains. And then past that, if you're doing like, this is where like, this is where like athletes do it. This is like overreaching right here. So this, this whole thing, that's like um, diminishing returns. Okay. Let me do that in red so you can see it's bad. I don't know if I'll be able to back up far enough on this thing. Oh, yeah, it was. Okay. So like, um, let me get some red here. Well, this is like some scary music here. Hold on a second. Need to change the music, folks. There we go. So like right here, this is like diminishing returns. Returns, okay? So like, yeah, you're gonna get like very small improvements, but also as you go up here, there's like a higher risk for in injury. So, injure, whoop, sorry, I gotta move some stuff out of the way. You guys can't see it, but I got some stuff in the way. Injury, whoop, risk, okay? Does that make sense? So when you guys go through your program and you're doing the push, pull, and legs routine, just make sure that for each one, let me see if I can get a new layer here. Um, turn off this layer, turn off that one. So if you're doing push, like say you do push-ups, okay, that's your push day, and then you do your pull, and then you do your legs. You just wanna make sure that throughout the week, you get in a total of like, I'd, I'd like you to get like 10, six minimum, but 10 is good, so like 10 sets of this, 10 sets of this, 
and 10 sets of this. The start seams are, you know, it's like six to 10 sets would be good, okay? Minimum. And then, as you get better, um, you, can, you can do more and more sets. But you, so like, you don't have to do this all in one day. Like for the push-ups, you could do like, um, you could do like three, like say this is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You could do, I wouldn't really do, uh, recommend that you do, oops, what am I seeing here? Let me get my eraser out. All right, let's see, so say, say you did like uh, six sets here, and six sets here, and six sets here. That'd be great, because then you'd be getting like 18 sets total. That's way more than you need. Like even if you just like two days a week, like Monday, and, Monday Wednesday, you did like six sets of push-ups on one day, six sets on the other, you get up to 12 sets, and then you'd be, go you'd be golden. But don't just do like these little circuits where you go, like I have a problem with people doing all these circuits and they don't get enough volume. So anyways, that's it for our educational section. So hopefully I didn't bore you guys out with that lecture. I'm not sure how long it was, but that hopefully will answer Scott's question. So Will, I am gonna talk about how to increase your muscular endurance. So at, at, at the very least right now, a lot of people can do things at home where they have uh, increasing their muscular endurance by doing like, just increase, that's where you like increase the amount of reps that you do. So you just do like more and more reps. Repetitions, you know how many times you do something. So like instead of doing like uh, a really heavy set of five or eight heavy bench presses, you do like a huge set, you know, like you do like um, 15 or 20 reps of push-ups or something like that. And that's high, high in, that's more muscular endurance than building strength. Ah, <laughs> Will, Will also says I'm working out at the same time. Nice guys, wow, that's incredible. Judy, are, you, you were running earlier, so in theory, you were also working out as this went. Michael, are you, is, is Michael still listening to the chat here? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't really view. Let me see if I can view who's still on here. Yes, um, let's see. Will, Will says, uh, sometimes I do a strength slash endurance type training where I do he does 80% one RM. So for those of you who don't know, that's uh, one, your one rep max is like the most weight that you can lift just one time. So it's like, for example, for a bench press, if you can only bench 100 pounds one time, that would be like your one RM. And then, so what Will is saying is he takes 80% of his one RM. So like, say you could lift 100 pounds, you would be doing like an 80 pound uh, bench press, okay? And so you do that for five reps, 10 to 15 sets with a 45 second rest in between. Okay, so 45 seconds, that's that's actually a pretty uh, short rest interval. I'm, is that on purpose, Will? Is that so it's more of the endurance kind of training? So actually, uh, I don't know if you've ever looked this up, Will, but um, have you ever heard of high intensity interval, high intensity interval resistance training, H-I-R-T, HIIRT training? It's like, it's like HIT training, H-I-I-T, but H-I-I-R-T, is just the same thing, but with resistance training. Um, there was a guy, oh, his, let me show you real quick. Um, let me see if I can switch to the sketchbook here, okay. And then I'll go to the sketchbook, okay. Uh, if you can, let me go back to this. Um, sorry, this is, let me just make this a whole new layer here and hide this layer. Okay, so um, H-I-I-T. That's high intensity interval, well, whatever, you guys know. High intensity, high, there we go. High intensity interval training, okay? That's usually like for cardio. And then uh, there's H, well, let me use a different color. Let me see here. Uh, so like, ah, sorry, this thing's moving in my lap. So let's say you got H-I-I-R-T. Oops, let me just backtrack here. There we go. Okay, so this is a uh, resistance training. Okay, AKA like lifting weights. Okay, so this is like strength training. And that actually still keeps your heart rate up Okay, so you got increased heart rate, but you're doing like really quick, whoop, doing like quick and heavy sets of like various exercises. And the guy who does that, uh, let me see if I can like back out here. 
Um, yeah, so like the guy who does that, his name is Paoli. He's an Italian researcher. And back in, I think like 2000, uh, 2012 or so, I think it was 2012, he pioneered this uh, HERT protocol. And he's actually come up with some articles since then. So Will, if you're interested, look up high intensity interval resistance training and uh, Paoli is your guy, okay? He's, I think he actually partnered with Brad Schoenfeld too, um, who's a really big exercise researcher. You probably know Brad Schoenfeld, I'm sure, if you're into research. So yeah, look that up and I'm gonna switch back to my main view here. Okay, so, uh, hey, Kyle Boyle is joining. Kyle, what's up, buddy? This is great, man, I could stream all night with you guys. Um, I gotta do my workout eventually, but hey, I'll work out at midnight if I have to. I don't have to get up early in the morning, right? Yeah, let me know, by the way, Will, let me know what you think of that high intensity interval resistance training. I might've talked to you about it before a long time ago, but um, Paoli is your guy. Look up, look him up, he's got really good research on that. So, that I, well, actually, the way we've trained together, man, the way that you and I train, or sorry, the way that you train specifically, where you do like the, your, your, your heart rate's up the whole time and you're getting a good cardio workout too at the same time as you're doing your heavy lifts, um, that would be great for you. You should actually look up that protocol. I won't go over it right now because I, I don't want to bore people with the, um, the research stuff, but in the future, I might actually like pull up an article, you know, and maybe I'll just kind of, I'll get my pen out here and I'll skim through it and, and go through some research if people want to, so... Ah, uh, yeah, so Will says he has heard of high intensity interval, res the HURT training. Um, he says my military friend does that. Yeah, that's actually a great application. Like the CrossFit stuff and the high intensity interval resi resistance training stuff, that's all great if you're in the military. Um, and actually, we have a former, uh, we, have a, we have a veteran with us that's watching, Jim. So, uh, and thank you for your service, Jim, again. But um, basically, yeah, like he probably did a lot of those um, endu muscular endurance kind of training back in the boot camp days so uh, not just boot camp but when you were doing your training and in, in your in your calisthenics and stuff like that they're commonly used in the military but yeah um i would actually love to hear from jim sometime about his days in the military in terms of what they did for exercise because funny enough they haven't changed the military hasn't changed a lot well the human body doesn't change a lot right from one generation to the next right we're all the same built the same way but um, they're very old school. They like to maintain a lot of their same exercise regimens and stuff like that. And uh, I used to work with some people who did military ergonomics research and uh, body composition research specifically. And uh, we would always we'd always talk about how the military brass is adapting um, the recommendations and like the research that exercise physiologists like me do, um, and how they would actually sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes they wouldn't change what they're doing, and then other times they'd change it uh, in a really weird way. <laughs> Margie says, true story. Um, so yeah, story time. Let me tell you guys a story about um, when my friend, Kate, was doing uh, exercise for, oh no, 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 uh, uh, let me tell you the, let me tell you a different one. Uh, I went to a conference. Sorry, Kate, I'll tell you a story another day if you're ever watching this. I was gonna tell you about your body composition work that you're doing and how they didn't necessarily change their, uh, the standards after he did all that DEXA stuff. Anyway, so um, yeah, I went to this conference with this guy. I was talking with this guy and he was talking about the military and he was saying that, oh, it's Scott. Scott Science knows this story because I told him. So uh, basically this guy was involved in ergonomics and like uh, he's a biomechanist, meaning he looks at your human biomechanics and he tries to figure out ways um, to improve movement like with, with gear on. So like these guys in the army were uh, going out and being deployed and they, were, and they were going on these missions, and uh, there was a guy who carried all their stuff. Uh, maybe Jim can help me out with the name of the guy who carries all the stuff, okay? But he carries all this equipment with him, really heavy, big backpacks, okay? He's like their, he's, he's not a mule, he's just like, he's not a packing mule, but he basically carries all their stuff with them, okay? And it's really heavy, so like when he had his gun, well, I should get my assault rifle over here. I don't have an assault rifle, I have a Nerf gun, but I should get my Nerf gun over here and demonstrate, but anyways, so you're like, you're running along, you're running along, okay, and then you gotta quickly swivel to your target, right? And when they would do that, their their backpacks would uh, have so much stuff in them, it would throw them off and it would throw off their aim and they would miss and these guys, they're worried we're gonna be dying because they're not able to, you know, or just at a higher risk because they couldn't adapt to combat because they're carrying so much stuff. So they, they, they asked the biomechanist guy to figure it out, you know, how he could improve the biomechanics of the bat or the ergonomics of the backpack. 
So he did. He, de he developed this new backpack that nicely distributed the load um, so that it when you when you turned, you know, not only did, was it better for rotation movements, but also just in general, like it was less stress on all of your joints when you're running with all that equipment on there. And anybody who's in the military knows you're not just you're not just running, you're running with stuff. And that stuff is heavy and that takes a toll on your joints. And that's why it's usually a young man's game because eventually in the military your, your joints go to crap and uh, you, you got great muscles but your joints take a, a beating. So um, so anyway, so he adapts this new, uh, this new backpack, shows it to the military brass and he says basically this reduces the load by like, you know, so let's say the standard issue one, he said this reduces the load, it feels like it's 20 pounds lighter. And they go, wow, that's great. Now we can put 20 more pounds of stuff in the backpack. So it's like the whole, the whole point of the thing is just thrown off because it's like he, he developed this backpack and then they said, oh, 20 pounds load off, let's just put 20 pounds more stuff in the backpack. So now the guys are just carrying even more stuff and they still have the same problem. So I always thought that was funny. It's like sometimes you do all this research and uh, you think you're helping out the uh, one particular group and then somebody else comes in and says, this is how we're gonna use that research. And it's not just for the military, I'm just saying like, um, it's just kind of funny because like uh, sometimes, it, you, yeah, it's just a, it's, a, it's just a funny story. So how'd you guys like story time, huh? Uh, I should have like the lights dim or something for story time next time, be like real moody in here and be like, hey, I tell you this story. I, you guys missed the sweet wave, rave party earlier too I was putting on. I was like, hey. Mm, mm, mm. Lifting weights. Raising the roof. Hey. That's a shoulder press I was demonstrating. Yes. Okay, so let's go back to the color scheme here. Anywho. Uh, hey, my mom just started watching. Hey, mom. She probably joined just in time for the sweet rave party. Okay, guys. Well, this has been a good first stream. Um, I'm going to try to do some of my outro stuff here so you guys can, so I can practice doing that while I'm on the stream. But, um, yeah, I think I covered everything. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm going to do it again Monday night at 7 o'clock, and we'll just keep talking about, uh, Maybe it'll just be kind of like a hangout section. It'll be a little, a little bit less structured. I'm gonna probably use the next couple days to tweak my setup, and I'm gonna have the, I'm gonna have the chat up so you guys can see each other, uh, you know, as as everything's going. So I don't have to use this too to monitor you guys. You'll just see you'll actually see your comments in the video. So that's pretty cool. Okay, well, you guys have a good night. I'll see you later, and thanks for watching. And remember, sorry, I think it cut off there for a second, but I just want to let you guys know you only got one life to live. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Uh, I'll catch you guys later on Monday night. Sorry the audio cut off there. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was just a small portion from one of my two to three hour long Facebook live streams. If you guys want to catch one of my streams, follow my page on Facebook at facebook.com slash one life to lift. Go ahead and give it a like and you'll get notified whenever I go live. If you like this kind of content, check out the other clips I have on my Stream Clips playlist here on YouTube. And if there's a topic you'd like me to expand on, sound off in the comments down below. If it's something that I can answer quickly, I'll respond in the comments. But if it's a bigger topic, I may even make it a video in the future uh, for my YouTube channel or just uh, do a stream on it. I'm always looking for new suggestions since there are so many juicy topics to cover. And as always, make sure to subscribe for more of these videos and I'll catch you in the next clip coming right up.